Hello, welcome to another episode of Commander Dirtle. So, as you would have seen in the quick preview I gave on Monday's set musings, this is the card pool that I've got for Scars of Meriden. And um, this, I've just got the whole, the whole card pool here, 180 cards. Just before I... I go switch over to the uh, slightly trimmed down version or the first pass of the trim down I just thought it'd be interesting to uh, go through some of the the mythics and rares and what springs to my mind in in terms of various angles I, I could have taken now in today's episode we're going to be building around Azuri so it's going to be elf tribal um, possibly with a smattering of effect but we'll see uh, interestingly, we've also got an asceticism in green as well. So it's an interesting artifact, so I'm planning on um, playing that. We have a, a Nim Death Mantle as a rare. Um, I'll have to see whether I decide to, to cut that. That would still be in the, the stripped down version of this. Um, certainly... If I was just interested in building decks where I do like, you know, building around a rare, then clearly this lends itself well to a, a zombie and um, like reanimation um, deck. Then this one, obviously, uh, if I wanted to build, say, a mere, a mere tribal which uh, there are a number of mirrors in this deck, including probably um, some more ones that synergize better with, um, you know, across all mirrors. I'm trying to remember now, there is a, like a mirror lord in the set. And probably that was a uncommon. And I don't know if I see that here. Um... So I noticed that there's a necrotic goose here, so an another excuse or another possibility where I could have gone down, which I chose not to have, uh, of some sort of ooze deck. This is interesting because um, it's a different way of looking at the graveyard than, say, the sort of way you might go with an, um, a Nim, with Nim Death, Death Mantle, in that this one you want, stuff staying in the graveyard so this would work well in a like a mill strategy um, so you're just filling graveyards and then you can sort of pilfer abilities there's a I think um, a few other including a commander which obviously cares about um, the abilities of creatures in your graveyard so that's just really um, well you could you could say you know infect tribal maybe uh, yeah artifacts oh there's the there's a blue the blue black allied tap land and then we have this red card so what have we got you know, damage yeah so so yeah I've chosen to go down the mono green route so here's all the, the cards that, that are technically playable under under the banner of Azuri in terms of just the colour. So now we just need to go through and take out um, all the stuff that just isn't relevant in terms of the, the sort of you know, elf tribal build I want to go with. I don't know if... You see, what's interesting with this is as elf creatures you control get plus three plus three and gain trample until end of turn which basically pumps everything including azuri so i wonder how tempting it is to if i come across any here um also include a smattering of equipment to have like a voltron side theme but um certainly i'm not going to go with that creatures flying and first strike that's interesting on a commander so I'll leave that in there um, see this is where I'm 
into minds about the whole infect thing. Oh, do I want to be playing around with it? This this is an interesting card. If this was a a deck that relied heavily on counters, but I don't think it is going to be. So maybe let's just get a bit aggressive here and just take out yeah anything that really doesn't play to the look at the elf tribal um no only sacking out permanence that would be good in that other deck like the nim dismantle no i'll leave infiltration lens in i don't need mox opal It's a monocolor deck. Um, no. Tumble, tumble, tumble magnet. So I get to tap down target creature or artifact or creature. And that will be interesting utility. I think I'm at this point going to remove most of this <clears throat> is indestructible well seeing as it's in the pool let's leave it in for the moment right um i'm only really interested in stuff in terms of creatures colored green creatures where it is an elf i'll leave this in okay copper's the green one it's a way of dealing with artifacts for enchantments, that's fine. Don't want that. Chrome Steed. Yeah, I'm probably going to find a lot of Metal Craft uh, in fact. It's an interesting way of getting creatures back from the graveyard, but I think I'll leave it out. Dark Steel Sentinel is indestructible, but it is a 3-3 for 6. So it's annoying. Hmm. No. Let's just remo remove all my <laughs> potential mere tribals here. That's rustic. Yeah. Um. No. Take Leave that in so creatures you control can't be the target spells or abilities opponents control. No, I don't think I'm going to play any of these instants. I don't want to be generating token insects really. Um, and a lot of this stuff, I, I, you know, you have to be a bit mindful with one hit things in Commander. Unless it's removal. I mean, that XX spell was interesting. But yeah, I'm going to get rid of all of that. Um, yeah, this doesn't really make a lot of sense. And this, so I'm playing green. So I think I'm going to be a, a bit... I just need to watch my mana curve. But I'm going to downsize my forest for the moment. Um, and just see... How I go because I might be, you know, ending up with a lot of um, mana dorks and ramp. So we'll see. Right, let's dive in to this. See what we get recommended. So where to start? Um, Let's just have a look and see what we get on the Planeswalker side of things. Nissa, okay. Whenever you tap a forest for mana, add one green. Okay, well, certainly not going to hurt. That seems to be the only recommendation. So 
want to see what we've got here. So on the enchantment side of things, we have one. Let's see what other support enchantments might be of interest to us. Okay, beginning of combat. Okay, that is very interesting. So the same name as another creature control. Draw a card. Okay, so we're <laughs> we're playing commander. Oh yeah, I did like Beastmaster Ascension. This is always interesting where you get these utility enchantments. Um, sorry, modal enchantments. I think I might put that in. Mm. Anything else here? So currently I don't have any instant sorcery, so I suppose I'd better remedy that and see what sort of spot um, utility we, we might want to add here. Now expect the usual suspects. Um, Cost to cast this land, sacrifice a library for a land card. Such a library for a land card. Okay. I don't know if I really want, I need a crop rotation. It's interesting tutor. Nice bit of utility. Worldly tree tutor be nice in a creature deck. Oh, this, that's cool. So that's my removal. It's interesting utility if there was like mass removal. Okay. I suppose that is interesting indirect removal. At instant speed. We'll do that then. Right, sorceries. I don't want a ton of like non creature I mean I'm gonna rely mostly on non creatures, so now I need to definitely think about um ramp here as I'm in green. Okay, cultivate. That's my only green card drawn as I find some artifacts. 
Oh, draw a card for each creature you control, yep. On Kadama's reach, of course. Oh, I do like overwhelming stampede. And that one. That's interesting. So we'll do that. I think I'll stick on that. What sort of artifacts are you going to suggest? I might end up swapping some of my artifacts out if I get some better suggestions here. Okay, so... Yeah, this, this and this. That's what I was thinking. So I'm going to want to keep that in, we'll take that out, we'll leave that in. Um, the only problem is I can see that coming. I was curious as to what this was in. It was in that game night set as well. Hmm. Okay, so it was only in uh, Um and Cat. Right, 64 slots left. Let's go. I think we know <laughs> on the creature side of things what's going to be suggested here and then I must remember to include obviously some um, some land utility right so anything in green it's always tough to find card draw so that's always good um, let me just make sure I grab all the 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 lordy elves like imperial is perfect and anything that says whenever you cast an elf spell or whenever an elf enters the battlefield What's land war visionary? Okay, so this card all st stapled to a mana dork. Mm. Yeah, definitely that. That one. We want that one. Yeah, devotion stuff as well. Um, oh, create a hive beer moth is always good. We want that. 
and then we'll go for it's obviously defaulting to artwork that's not on here yet do you want to go for an old school Lanoir Alp? Maybe, I don't know. What do you think? Be a bit on the pricey side, eh? Uh, let's go for the tenth edition one. It's fun. Okay. So we'll put our elf mana dorks in, including the ones that um, tap stuff. Oh. How are we doing? Get in there. So we've got another 20 slots. Ooh. This is going to be cool. And just everything from here, really. Um, okay, I mentioned about needing card draw. It's a way of getting stuff back. Yeah, that gives green creatures flash. We get card draw for that. Okay, all of our all of our ramp. Other tap creatures you can try with death touch. Okay. I didn't know about that, so I was gonna add that manually if it didn't come up. Double up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Or oh, card draw. So Soul of the Harvest. Whenever another non-token creature enters a battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. All right. So we did get Elvish Arch Druid in here as well. That's good. We've got most of the high synergy stuff has been suggested. And all the mana dorks. I'm just trying to rack my brains and think whether there's any changelings. that might work well in here definitely want that it's interesting that one like it bounces elves back You can drop it, yeah, definitely. Card, yes, yeah. so again, we're, we're after these card draw. Oh, of course, Jorga. Now, that in and I don't think I've got the other jogger yet I 
at that one from uh, that Rise of the Eldrazi. Remember that one? Now, I don't remember seeing Fauna Shaman either. So we've got three slots left. Oh, I know. Tenth edition. Um, that's the one, isn't it? Goes Herald, yeah. It's an elf. Stops other stuff being counted. And I think there was a, well, I'm not saying a recent call set, but you've got a number of these elvish whatever, and there's elvish, did I already put elvish clan caller in here? I'm not sure. I don't think. Just for the fact, obviously, the, the rest of it doesn't make any sense in a um, in a commander deck. Um, but just uh, giving other elves plus one plus one is useful. I think I've already got Sylvan Ranger in here or something, haven't I? Maybe not. Ooh, actually, I think I remember this from. Heedless one. Now, what was that in originally? That's. Oh, I'll take one out. Let me just. Because that's got me curious. Hold on. It was on slot. That was it. I thought so. Okay. Is there anything... That's a little bit rubbish. <laughs> well, it is handy having that for destroying. Although, again, you can sort of see it coming. So let's get that, get rid of that. I think that's it. So we got 39 creatures in here. Um, so the last thing we need to do is just see what utility land might get suggested, but I'm pretty happy with that. Let's um, go to land here. There's got to be some land that's going to double up. Oh. Yeah, that's that's cool for utility lands. Choose a colour. Yeah, so have that, have that, get that. Um, go 
prize cradle. Okay, it is an obscene prize, but uh, yeah, it's just a, a theoretical deck. So, um, I just can't help it. Um, come to the battlefield tapped. Six green, twenty green. Do I want to make my utility lands forests? Is there any advantage in doing that? Hmm. Not sure. Okay. Right, I just need to prune down the forest here. Twenty-seven, one more. Boom. What the hell does my curve look like? Oh, yep, that's nice. That is nice. So it's all around three or. Oh. Or that's where the centre of the curve is, so we'll see if I need to bump up my land count. This gets out turn three as well. Looks like if I let me just sort this by CMC. Look down the where we are, so you can sort of see here. So everything below here, here and below, oh hang on, no one, sorry, jumped up, yeah, here and below, is cast of all on three mana, and then above this, what have we got, just move that up, so those, see that, yeah, there, so they're all above that. We top out at eight mana with the Crater Hoof Behemoth. So what I might be tempted to do is is one thing is to if it's not necessarily adding elf utility or creature utility, um, I might decide to substitute one of those for a for a forest if I'm having trouble with my draw. Um, Everything else, yeah, the only thing is the utility side of things, certainly on the sorceries, we might get stuck, but the instance we've got, what, well, most of them can be cast with three mana, the only one is not the return of the wild speed, uh -oh. Nissa might get a little bit stuck, and certainly all of our artifacts are good, they're well within that range. So I'm pretty hopeful. Let's just have a look at the play test. Oh dear. Yeah, this is always a risk. So we have a a no lander here. Let's just see. So that's a one lander with a land war elf. Um a two. No land with a soul ring. Three. One. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't really want to be starved out here. Let me just go back.
So we need to lose three cards. Let's lose that. Filtration lens and anything else here that I could ditch. That's a turn, turn seven. Um, yeah, let's ditch that. Okay, back in. N now I will actually export this. Okay, to land. No land. Okay. Weird. Okay, let's just play it out and see what's going on. So, to land. So what have we got here? We've got Kadama's Reach, turn three, Beast Within, three, three. So turn two, Elvish War Master. Okay, which we do want to get out fairly early. So turn one, we get our forest out, draw a card. Turn two, we get our Rogue's Passage out. And we cast our Elvish War Master. Now we are stuck. <laughs> okay, what does this do? Nothing. All right. Oh dear. Oh, there's our forest. So now we can choose whether we want to get our Zuri out. Do we have anything to protect that? Probably not. So would I want, yeah, I would probably want to get this out, maybe first. Okay, Beast Within is our utility, so these are all just, oh, okay. So now we've got three mana, I can get this out, so I really need to choose, I would probably get, Yeah, I'd probably get this out first. Okay, so we go to the forest and we do a Kodama's Reach. And yeah, so yeah, then things get... So once this all starts rolling, um, basically we're looking to get Azuri out and then Elves and Ram more and stuff like that. So, so really the important thing is the first sort of four, you know, three or four turns in this deck, I think. That's the way it looks to me. So let's just try another sample hand here. So th I'd be inclined, you know, if I was tweaking this deck, then that would definitely be the area I'd look to, to, to try and improve the draws on is those, like the first three draws. I think we've got the low mana creatures. It's just making sure we get enough uh, land out and you know, support cards that are going to do that. So I might want to go through and certainly what I might want to do is review my ramp and just make sure that I've got the sort of ramp that is, is playable, you know, turn one, two, around there, around there sort of thing. So I'm going to play that out. Can't do anything at the moment. Oh, we do have a Nixos, so I'd want to get that out. 
and out choose our color which is green and we can get Sylvan Ranger out and tutor for a thing so that would be cool so yeah so we get that out probably put out Sylvan Ranger tutor for another forest at that point um, so if I do that does it come into play I'll put it in our hand okay good to know so yeah that that might be a good excuse for maybe doing that later I didn't read that so then we shuffle our library um yeah so again be a bit mindful of that you know because your hands full and you get stuck I mean we're not going to get stuck fortunately because we we can play our land each turn then you could end up having to discard stuff unless of course it was um, cards that like being in the in the graveyard so yeah I think again here it's looking good so we would get oh, sorry out of one point we've got a cultivate yeah again so it's a really critical and then just things start to go nice and LV okay yeah so that's nice hand there oh very nice yeah and yeah so I am getting the odd no lander it's the only thing and how long does it take on so I do hit a forest on the draw and then an arbor elf and then an elvis visionary mm. so two ha two lander but no forest when do we hit our first forest? Oh, a little while in. Um, okay, so two, four, three land. Yeah, so something to think about, I think, with this deck. It was taking a bit further. So I think I'm going to stop it there. I've, I've found out enough. I mean, we like anything with, you know, elf tribal with cross synergies or any tribe with cross synergies. Obviously, you're interested in, in things just... Um, you know, building up nicely and then everything just rolling out and once everything starts synergizing with everything else things can get seriously out of control so yeah i hope you've enjoyed that that was uh, that was very interesting um i'm just looking ahead because of the nature of the um this particular block um yeah i'm not saying there's going to be some weird choices but you know in, i'm a little stuck in terms of the the sort of legendaries that we end up with um, and where there is a legendary in the set i like to find you know create a card pool in mt gen until i i get a legendary um where there isn't a legendary in the set at all then as you know i just do it based off the rares but i do want to try and always build around a legendary where i can so with this this particular block um you might find that some of the choices for commanders aren't always the super popular ones but that in some ways makes it more interesting so thanks again for watching bye for now and i will see you in the next video